Alright, so I don't know what happened with Genshin Impact, but I guess their marketing team decided that, okay, Arlequina is going to sell absolutely. Maybe, I'm actually not quite sure. But today we're going to be breaking down the animated short, the song Burning in the Embers, both the trailer and the full one, and then her character teaser, because Arlequina is definitely one of the characters that I think have a very polarizing effect especially in the Western community of Genshin Impact. If you notice, Arlequina is one of the most complex characters that Genshin has ever produced. Not only is she a character that is absolutely outside of the standards of the usual waifu, but also because she actively may be a criminal on screen. Arlequino is a very different perspective altogether. You can see the people that she has affected. You have Linny, Lynette, Fremini. So Arlequino as a character is one of the most complex that I genuinely think is the more difficult characters to not only dissect, but also to criticize. And that's what makes her so good. Oh. Also for context before I begin with this, by the way, I'm not actually sure if the animated short was like animated by the studio of Hoyoverse, you know, like the people that do the teasers, the people that do the demos. But because it's in the official Genshin Impact channel, I'm going to be treating all of this as canon material. I think as I should. Alright, so let's go. Born into this world all alone. But so here pretty. in the house of the hearth, you will grow up to be strong. As child Your soldiers. goal is to learn to compete, to defeat all your brothers and sisters in battle, and become king. Well, ain't that healthy. <laughs> Where's Pear Ware? Didn't she want to hear the story? Pear Ware. Excuse me, mother. She's doing oh. a funeral for her spider. <gasps> That's her real name. That okay. child. Maybe her curse is flaring up again. Clairvy, see to her. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's the girl that she's looking for. It's the girl from the trailer. Oh, she's so cute. You, you want some? Sure. Uh. You must know spiders don't eat cake. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> the birds are from their cage. Just lyrics. Sunbeams filter through the foliage. Flames go Mothers usually argue with their daughters. I've heard that in Smeshnaya, colored light dances in the sky at night. When we're grown up... Shall we go see it together? <laughs> She's gonna die. <laughs> That's like a red flag in all anime. But you're dead. <gasps> oh! I should have pruned this flower long ago, not waited till it wilts. How grotesque. Wouldn't you agree?
innocence and kindness are such beautiful qualities. Sadly, they're all so useless! Fly the nest. You are no exception. <laughs> Stay away, don't fall asleep. The way is long and the gloom is deep. And there's glow. <laughs> Surrender. Let your mother guide you, and you shall become the one true king! She was taken in prison. Oh, I guess so. It's a board nation. <gasps> I'm so scared for what will happen to Lynette. <laughs> Not like this. <sighs> Her Majesty the Tsaritsa has decreed as follows. I hereby oh pardon God. your crimes and bestow upon you a new name. This title and its legacy of bloodshed are now yours to bear, my poor, mad, cursed knave. Oh, shit. Oh, bigger shit. <gasps> it's Fremini. Come with me. Oh, wait. I will raise I you as stupid. my child. Could be very like a strict and unfeeling <laughs> father. That wasn't from an A. I, I'm, 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 I'm dumb. I'm dumb. The, t the timeline doesn't go. Let me collect my thoughts here before I actually break it down. Before I break down, you know. You only got a glimpse of what happened with the director in around the Watatsumi Island uh, side side quests and then with Fremenay's own story quest where we already know that she's a dick and the people that she raised before were also kind of a dicks. I guess this recontextualizes why Arlequina calls herself father instead of mother which is really cool. I, I like that they added that little text. So the previous House of the Hearth was meant to be a kind of an arena, a battleground, I suppose, to see who was the strongest out of all of them. Your goal is to learn to compete to defeat all of your brothers and sisters in battle and become king. And like a part of me was thinking that it was just regular usurpation, but turns out no, it could just easily be like I'm wiping all of you out from the map. I guess mass children murder? I'm not saying that Arlequina is a good parent, I definitely would never boil down her characterization to something as monotone as, oh, she's just a good parent. I think that what she did with this cycle is obviously this is way, way worse, but I also do think that Arlequina herself is still incorporated into the system. Cannot lie that the system is still sending children off to, you know, dangerous fights and dangerous battles and missions. It's still child endangerment and a lot of other things that are probably illegal.
So I don't think that this was meant to like really erase that part of Arlequino, more so recontextualize what got her into that path in the first place to become this unfeeling person. Oh, one thing that I realized is what is the point of all of this? Listen, I'm gonna be talking this from the context of someone that has an army of children, I suppose, but what is the point of having, like, defeating all of your brothers and sisters in battle and becoming king? That I think that it's just not a business ever. I'm so sorry. I don't think that it's a very practical way of running a place that has a lot of potential. I think that Arlequina's business... I'm gonna stop talking right now. I, I don't want to seem like I know too much about child endangerment and child soldiers. They look so happy. That, that's so scary. It's just giving me Cornelia vibes from Code Kiosk. Sorry. I don't know who this chick is. I think she's dead. But I'm not quite sure either. Yeah, I think this chick is just straight up dead. And then I think Mother is making it so that... She feels like this doting, calm adult, you know, like she's reading people bedtime, like she's reading bedtime stories to the children. However, you know, usual manipulation tactics, let them keep their guard down until it's too late. So the girl that we're going to be, that has a focal point in Arlequina's character story is named Claire Reed. And I think this is the girl that was also in like the trailer. We're going to check that out. I'm gonna fact check this later. So I have the trailer here. Oh my god. I don't actually think this is the girl. Could she have been revived? Could have could she have been reverted back to an age? Is this some kind of aging technique that the Tor like something like what the Tori does? Who knows, honestly, or maybe it's just a different girl altogether. I just realized we see her grow up and she was stabbed. So if this is her that's gonna have a bigger question because when you see her that she's already old well that's kind of sad and then we see arlequin here this is confirmation that yes when she was first mentioned as having killed the previous director it wasn't like oh the child was metaphorical it also meant that you know she was also a child of the house of the hearth and she's actually really relatively young here i think she's i guess she's around like early 20s if I'm like early 20s, late teens, if this is like how I'm going to be seeing this as, which means that she's probably around um, a few years older than Fremenet. I actually thought that Fremenet and her had a bigger gap, but because Fremenet was present when this um, douchebag was still alive, it means that Arlequina is still relatively human. I think. You can never know with the Fatui Harbingers, you know? And then I think we receive just a random fight. With Arlequina showcasing her powers, she has some ice abilities, and she's, you know, an asshole. This is the lady that, like, lied to Fremini about, like, what happened to his mom. So, you know, I have no sympathy. There we can see the highlight of her curse. It extends all the way up from her arm. I don't know any specifics of what that curse could be, but one interesting note that I think... I'm going to consider when talking about Arlequina. Relatively sympathetic to the children, considering, well, her position. But I also think that she's so battle-ready and battle-hardened that her sternness just bleeds into whatever compassion she could have possibly had for the children. I think that's very important. And then we see it getting shattered. And then we see this cool-ass animation with the scythe. Ah, yes. Instant gratification. She absolutely nuked her. I thought that it was going to be like, oh, I killed her and like I slashed her, but no. They really went like the full out of the way just to kill this douchebag and just went, there's a nuke. There's absolutely a nuke. <laughs> she is reduced smithereen. She is gone. And then we see that she's taken into custody. She looks so young here. I wonder how long she's actually been a Fatui Harbinger. I actually can't tell how long it's been since like... She's been indoctrinated into the Harbingers. But here she looks relatively young, or maybe it's just the art style. And then we move on and we see the Sapolyarni Palace as decreed by the Tsaritsa. <laughs> and we and we, and <laughs> we see Signora being as badass as ever pop off. We finally get art of like what she looked like in her Fatui uh in her Fatui robes. And we see whatever this is. Hey, listen, listen. I know that this is supposed to be an Arlequina video, but you have to like look at me in the eye and just say, 
Hmm. I don't think that I could have ever expected it to look like that. <laughs> Out of all of the fan art that you have for Scaramouche whenever he wears like the Fatui officer like robes, it always just like it's him wearing it normally and then like this one's like no 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 and he puts on the whole ass hood. I think it's just very symbolic that Scaramouche will always have something covering his head for reasons. Uh, just for characterization reasons, but you have to admit that kind of looks funny. <laughs> now, I have a bigger question when it comes to this scene. Does this mean that Arlequino was indoctrinated into the Fatui Harbingers before certain characters? Or is it just that they fucked off and had you know, something better to do than watch this kid get inaugurated into the knave role? But another question that I have is, what was her number and was it number 4? Because he was already number 6 when he entered. Scaramouche basically fought for his number by beating the lower ranking Harbingers. He got straight into rank 6. Senora, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if he beat her so that he can get number 6. But the next question that I have is, did the knave start? as number four like she took over the position of the previous knave as being number four or was she like child that started from the bottom because if you didn't know then harbinger's number correlates to not only physical power but also mental power political power and etc it would definitely make sense if arlequino it would make sense if arlequino as the knave started from the very bottom then ranked up but if that was the case that implies that the current arlequino right now was able to usurp scaramouche senora and whoever was underneath the fourth number and that's just kind of scary if that was really the case if she just like rose up the ranks and was successful in rising up all of those ranks because she was able to beat number six and number eight or if she already inherited the number four then that just means that numbers can be passed down when somebody usurps them it does make sense if her number was gotten through combat because she did you know nuke the douchebag out of existence so i would give her number four too she kind of deserves it <laughs> and then we see her completely being accepted into the fatui and she's kind of around the same age that we already see her as if not maybe a few years like give or take a few years adding into that she still does look relatively young versus like how we know her as this is not Femini. i made a mistake this is not Femini. Femini has blue eyes and very 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 light hair so yeah that's the animated short the song burning in the embers is so good this is actually longer than some videos <laughs> who is calling this short let's move on to arlequino sleep in peace is that, the, is that the kid? Is that the kid from like from her from her previous teaser? I mean, he has the same hair. I, father. Oh, and that was a woman. I was <laughs> reckless when I saw those emaciated patients, those poor children, the futile hope in their eyes. I've told you before, recklessness always leads to failure. But it was not wholly in vain. I shall settle the rest. Ah, those fools. They will never know the wonders of wealth. Father, your face. Fremine, we can take in a few more homeless children next year. I have acquired some new funds. Oh, okay. Mission accomplished. You can sleep now. Thank you. Once I'm better. I'll start my next mission. Those who parade their virtues often do the most evil. We are not like them. Rest in peace, 
Snajevna. My child. Interesting. I think this is a very interesting take on Arlie Kino's character. Before we do anything, <laughs> before we say anything, I think I just want to remove from my everlasting lens that Arlie Kino is a good person. I want to raise the standard of morality. I think this is a really intelligent piece of work that if we just dumb it down by setting such a low standard of good care of like good mor morally good characters, I think it would just do injustice to this um, teaser. Arlequina knows she is not a good person. Arlequina has never said she was a good person. Arlequina herself, and maybe even the children of the House of the Hearth, have a very skewed perception of, um, of justice. Almost to the point that it's retribution of some sort. I think that's a very focal, um, that's a very good focus to start all of this off. Because while we do see that she's relatively a decent parent, I think that Arlequina herself is a very standoffish character that definitely has no right to being a parent. She's a very militaristic woman that has her own goals and is cruel. I think that that's the word that I will always use for Arlequino. No matter how caring she can seem to the children, you also need to remember that she is still using this system that was built upon child soldiers. <laughs> And she did still endanger the lives of a lot of children, even if it was for the betterment of someone. However, what I like about Arlequino as a character is that she is relatively vulnerable in certain moments. There are a lot of moments in the story that Arlequino herself has tried to have a connection with the characters, uh, with the children. And I think similar to how when you say that Arlequino is a bad character or a bad father, it also kind of undermines if you say that she is inherently evil. I think her own code of morality is relatively set in stone. She doesn't want the rich to profit off of the poor. She wants to at least provide a home for these children. However, she also believes in the iron fist, in the blood sacrifices. I shouldn't call it like that. She also believes in the more militaristic approaches of all of this, which is, you know, not good because they're children. But to say that Erlikina is inherently evil, in my opinion, is also just kind of reduces her character by a lot. Erlikina looks like she does care for the children, but almost if I cared for my computer, in a way. I don't know if she even sees them as people, and I don't know if the children themselves see themselves as people, which is actually the sadder part. A lot of the times when it comes to indoctrinating children, especially in literature, you can see the pattern that the children would do whatever it takes to uphold the status quo of the environment that they're in. That is what we see with this girl when she's like literally dying. The thing on her mind is that I'm going to start the next mission, I'm gonna make you proud. It's it's a very toxic environment. Arlequin herself may not be completely evil, yet, but she is definitely not good either, and she's definitely not a good parent. Arlequino's character is a very interesting perspective for me personally because it's a big balancing act between this military figure and this political figure of Arlequino versus the softer side of Peroer, who has definitely seen the more cruel aspects of what a harsh parent can do for the children. However, we cannot say that Arlequino is completely a good parent. Just because she mitigated some of the cycle of abuse does not mean that there are no long-term effects for the homeless children that are in her orphanage. Arlequino for me is one of the best written characters, well, so far, I guess, with what we've seen with the teaser and the animated shorts and even just the little hints that we get from Lenny, Lynette, and Fremenet's story. She never says that she's a good character, but you can see that her morals are relatively intact. Her morals are justice for the people that did not have it, but her methods are very, very questionable. She is a very Robin Hood-esque character. If anything, I wouldn't say she's a hero, she's more of an anti-hero. She, uh, she wouldn't kill you if you didn't give her reason to, but she definitely isn't a kind person or even a good person at this rate. She is the person that I honestly think is... She stands out because she is cruel. And that's what makes her really nice. And that's what makes her like a really cool character. For some reason, whenever I think of Arlequina, the first thing on my mind is honestly like a defeatist ideology. It's very strange. Uh, let me explain. Every time that I see her on screen, she just feels so tired. 
or at least she feels like she's still operating within the system or the cycle of abuse that her previous uh, mother lit up for her. And you can see that this is the effects of that kind of indoctrination. But while she does want to protect the children, or at least she wants to keep the children safe, or oh, safe is not the word. And even though she wants to keep the children in a comfortable environment, we also need to, to realize that she has been indoctrinated with that iron fist grip of the militaristic views of the previous name, which is kind of sad. Arlequino was never meant to be anyone's savior. That's the thing. Arlequino was never meant to be anyone's savior. She is meant to be a character that is complex and someone that operates within the system of the Fatui. She is meant to be someone that was... When we look at her, I want you to look at her from the perspective of someone that was raised in the system and someone that has not made a complete and has and someone that has not made a complete attempt to rewrite the system itself. Sure, she's mitigating some of the effects, but honestly, I think that she still stands to benefit as well as the Fatui Harbingers in general. She d she does stand to be she does stand to benefit from the lives of literal homeless children. But yeah, that's it for me today. Arlequina was a character that I think is cruel. She's definitely a character that I'm looking forward to, and she's definitely one of the cooler characters that I've ever seen in Genshin Impact. I absolutely love her. I think she's swell. I don't think she's a good person, but that's what makes her even better. But, but, Arlequina is a very polarizing character, and I want you to give me your opinions on her. You can 100% disagree with what I said, because Arlequina is a very touchy subject, and, well, it's abuse it's children it's one of the most difficult topics to even discuss on a public platform and that's why it needs an actual discourse maybe that's why i really like arlequina she is someone that invokes conversation a good character is usually someone that a lot of people criticize critique or analyze like overanalyze and, and give retrospective analysis so if you have any thoughts on arlequina if you disagree on what they say if you think she's a good person if you think she's inherently evil then i want you to write it down in the comments below and yeah my name is Aston. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye.